Hello and welcome to Faragadamu. Over 40,000 Eritrean and South Sudanese refugees, Israel calls them of course infiltrators, are facing forced deportation or relocation to prison facilities by the end of this month. What is happening? Israel's Ambassador Rafael Morav joins me to look into those and other issues on the bilateral relations between Ethiopia and Israel. A very warm welcome to the program. Very pleased to be Welcome uh, to this uh, show and uh, to answer your questions. You were appointed as your country's ambassador to Ethiopia. When was it? In December of last year? Yeah, end of uh, November, yes. You, you just did, what, uh, three months already, and we're not going to talk about what you have done as your country's ambassador to Ethiopia, obviously. But uh, I'm, I'm sure we'll have another opportunity to do that in the years ahead. But other than that, what are your priorities here? when uh, you look forward to your three years as a master in Ethiopia. Okay, so let's start by stating that we have already excellent relations between the two countries. Uh, we have strong cooperation and uh, contacts at the highest level. So I start from a rather ha higher uh, point. But, of course, there is uh, much room to deepen the cooperation and I think also to show tangible results for, this, uh, for the excellent relations. In which, in which areas? In the form of economic cooperation. So I focus on uh, encouraging Israeli investment in Ethiopia, bringing uh, Israeli companies to explore business opportunities and as well as to enlarge our cooperation in development with the government of Ethiopia. Development meaning you, you want to, to do that through uh, Mashav, is that, is that what That's it is? right. So Mashav, which is the Israel, uh, Israeli Agency for International Cooperation and Development, has already several projects here. The flagship one is in Avocado, where, uh, whereas we have introduced uh, export quality avocado varieties in Ethiopia through nurseries, and now they have already started to be exported to Europe. So it is a success because there is a high demand for that in the international markets. And of course, uh, we, we will expand it uh, to uh, as far as possible to the various regions of Ethiopia because the conditions for growing avocado are good. We have other projects of cooperation in the uh, irrigation, to introduce irrigation. As you may be aware, only 5% of the arable land in Ethiopia is irrigated, so if you just double the, the, the land uh, irrigated, uh, so you can uh, triple uh, and even more the yield. You're not necessarily talking about drip irrigation because in many parts of Ethiopia we have a uh, sufficient amount of yes, water to use. Yes, so water you have, but the, the thing is that only 5% of the arable uh, cultivated area in uh, Ethiopia is uh, irrigated, so you have room to increase much more the irrigation and in this way to increase the agricultural production in uh, by many folds and also through irrigation you can introduce fertilization and uh, improve much better the the quality of the agricultural production but primarily your focus would be other other than that your focus would be on investment in ethiopia you're trying to attract uh, many yes. many more israeli companies yes, to business I in ethiopia believe. which is this yeah, I believe that there are many uh, opportunities for Israeli companies. Uh, first of all, we are not very distant in, term, in geographical terms. Uh, we are a country that was based on agriculture as Ethiopia to date, and we made the transformation that the, the Ethiopian government is now uh, uh, conducting. So we have a lot of experience and, and knowledge to, to share with Ethiopia. And we have very good partnership with the government uh, of Ethiopia to... to to, f to follow on that. And last week you had the Agritech seminar here in Addis Ababa. Basically, you're targeting the upcoming uh, big exhibition in, in Israel. Yes, we'll have uh, from May uh, 8 to 10th uh, in Tel Aviv, Israel, the, one of the most important uh, conventions and exhibitions on agricultural uh, technologies. And we had, uh, so we made a um, promotion seminar last week uh, in Addis Abeba with the participation of the Minister of Agriculture and Natural Resources entitled um, uh, Israeli Technological Solutions to uh, Ethiopian Needs. And uh, we brought an expert from Israel who spoke about what Israel can offer and has to offer to increase the agricultural production um, 
in Ethiopia, starting from irrigation, as we discussed, fertilizers, quality seeds, post-harvest uh, treatment, and all the production uh, chain of uh, in the agriculture. So you've secured the Ethiopian participation at that big exhibition coming so up in So there is an, uh, a delegation that is uh, a business delegation conducted, uh, managed by the Chamber of Commerce of Ethiopia. Uh, I think there are about 20 to 30 participants. And on top of it, we'll have a official, an official delegation led by uh, either the minister or the state minister of agriculture. Well, this is a, a sudden shift in our discussion, but how many Ethiopian Jews do you have? In the, do, do, do you believe that there are Ethiopian Jew, Jews left behind who have not migrated to Israel? It's not a question of belief. It's, a, it's, a, um, it's a, an established fact. Yes, there are about eight to 9,000 Jews who are uh, um, waiting to be uh, re reunited with their families in Israel. And uh, there's a government uh, decision from 2015 to bring them to Israel. But that decision has been shelved in a way because you've picked a few and that's about it. No, you've stopped that's the definitely not the case. The decision is uh, bound by uh, budget uh, allocation and therefore it will be sp uh, spread over several years. And just I can inform you that the last year we had uh, repatriated 1,300. And this year they will be about the same size, maybe maybe a bit more, 1,500. But that is the size, that the capacity that we can absorb every year in terms of budget, because you have to understand that these people arrive with virtually nothing, no money, no uh, household, nothing. So it means that the Israeli government has to provide them housing, to teach them the Hebrew language, to f education, everything. So it has a budget implications, and therefore it is uh, spread over over time according to the, the budget capacity. That's not what Avram Negusi is, a lawmaker who, is, uh, who chairs the Israeli Parliament Absorption and Diaspora Committee. I'm sure you're familiar with that name. Sure, sure. He, he, he said that uh, he accused his government of discrimination, saying it makes it easier for other diaspora communities to immigrate. It's only the Ethiopian Jewish community that is being targeted, not the Americans, not the Russians, not the European Jews. Well, uh, and here a guy who is a Knesset, lawmaker, who is a lawmaker. Yes, Knesset member Abraham Negosa. I had a lot, lot of respect with him, and I met with him uh, several times in Israel. But he's a politician, and so I'm not going to argue with him <laughs> over the uh, over your show on his uh, claims. But I definitely uh, disagree with uh, what he says. You disagree, but uh, does, doesn't his argument hold water? No, no. I, I have. I can repeat again that there is a government decision which is being implemented, and that uh, every year, uh, according budget but capacity, maybe Abraham Negosa can find uh, bigger budgets. Uh, but you know, budget is also a question of political discussion uh, between coalition between the coalition members. But as it stands now, the budget allows more or less. 1,500 per year, and that's exactly what the government is doing every year. We, we are not in a position to, to bring, let's say, 5,000 or 10,000 when we have no housing to provide them and no schools to, to, to put the children. So, you know, we, we, it's, not, it's not a case of emergency. But does that? But does well, uh, I, I guess it is. When was it? In November or December? You visited the the communities, which were very close yes. uh, to where your embassy is. Yes, uh, it's it's really an emergency because the kids are not getting proper schooling. They are basically stateless, although they are going to school. No. They are not going to proper. Most of them don't have enough earnings because they are in transit, or they consider themselves in transition. And uh, most of them are very very poor. Uh, it's very hard to, to get work because m almost all of them came from the rural villages. And you have people who are separated from their families for 16 to 17 years. For example, one of the community leaders, his mother and his father are in Israel, as, as are three or four of his, uh, his siblings. Uh, he and a couple of his brothers and one uh, cousin are left be behind. 16 to 17 years. Yes. That's an emergency. Uh, no, it's, situation. Uh, no, it is a sad case and maybe a humanitarian case, but there is no emergency. They're Ethiopians. It's not that they're stateless and they have all the civil rights like any Ethiopians. And uh, they're, they're not the only poor in, in Ethiopia, regretfully. Uh, so, uh, they, but they are uprooted from their communities in the villages. Yeah, they choose to do so. 
But shouldn't you tell them to go back until the time arrives when the airplane? Uh, we did try, but they did, they made <laughs> their, their choice to come to Addis, uh, thinking that in this way it will put pressure on the government to to increase the the, the number of those who will be uh, allowed to come to Israel. But uh, it's not the case. But and it's up to their it's up to their choice that they came here. Some stayed in the villages. Some are in Gondar, uh, more, actually more in Gondar than in Addis. Uh, but the government will implement the decision that it has uh, decided, and it will take, as I said, two or three uh, more years. And uh, <clears throat> I can assure that if we meet in four years' time, as I will be... They will have, they will have all yes. migrated to Israel. Yes, yes. Uh, fair enough. How many refugees do you have in Israel? I'm talking about African refugees, primarily Eritrean and Southern Sudanese. Okay, so first of all, let's uh, use the right terminology. We're not talking about refugees. We're talking about migrants, mm -hmm. either illegal or work, work migrants, illegal migrants. Uh, yes, indeed, mainly actually for actually... Call let's actually call them infil infiltrators. Uh, yes, infiltrators. The Prime Minister. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah Prime that, that's Minister that's the term. Someone who enters illegally in your country is is is, is called that infiltrators, and that's exactly the. Term. All the refugees that we have in this country, close to a million of them, are not legally here. They As just cross the border. We do not have refugees. We have uh, mi illegal migrants. A small amount of them have uh, requested for uh, asylum uh, status. Um, and they got three, uh, for example, all of the, for, from who came from South Sudan, 300 of them, they have received the, the uh, asylum uh, in Israel. The other... Out of what, 60,000 perhaps? Southern Sudanese and Eritreans? Um, Some say it's over 30,000. Most 000. of them, we're talking uh, about 40,000 uh, illegal immigrants. And Israel. only 600 got what uh, legal... As I said, uh, most of them are from uh, Sudan and Eritrea and they are uh, mostly uh, illegal immigrants. They're working migrants. Uh, as they go to, to Europe or to, to the States or to other countries, they, some of them uh, reach Israel. Now the border is sealed, so it uh, has stopped. And now we try to relocate them uh, in safe uh, countries. Uh, most of them do not want to return to their countries, so we have arrangement with other countries. Like w which that ones? Mean, which uh, ones? In Africa, yes, they Rwanda yeah. and Uganda? I'm not, I don't know. The countries have not been uh, disclosed, so I cannot uh, relate to them, but I can assure that these are safe. The traditional destinations yes. for, 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 uh, for those refugees, whatever you mm -hmm. want to call them, been deported. The destination has been Rwanda. Is that correct? Some of them may have been relocated in uh, Rwanda. Yes, it, it is possible. I mean, I saw some reports on that. Um, and I think it's a very good uh, place. Uh, Rwanda is a model country for good governance, and it's doing very well. As you know, its president has been uh, is now the president uh, uh, the president of the African Union. So it's definitely uh, one of the possibilities that that these uh, migrants can choose if they but don't want to return to their home country. That's not what the refugees say who have been deported to Rwanda. Some of them have made it to Uganda because that's not the safest place to live in. Uh, some of them even try to go again to to Europe. So as Absolutely. I said, there are work so migrants who who don't want to return to, to they don't want to, to, to stay in Africa for their own reasons, but, uh, and they try to, but if it doesn't point. work in Israel, so they go to that's Uganda or they go to, to Europe, and uh, it's, it's their choice. We, we, pro, we propose them uh, to, because, uh, to have a respectable life in another country. We give them some financial uh, encouragement for that. And if they choose to, to retry their chance by going to Europe, other nations, believing in the dream that the pride is, is there, it's up to their choice. So oh. We have the duty as a country to, to, uh, to protect our borders and to determine our migration policy and, and to, to, to decide who we want to, to receive in Israel and who we don't want to receive, like any country, including Ethiopia. Well, Ethiopia, Ethiopia is home to uh, uh, close to a million refugees from at least four or five countries. I'm aware of that. Yeah. And we call them refugees. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we treat them as such. That's very good, yes, with the international uh, and, help. And, 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 uh, and I think the UNHCR is disappointed with, it, with what you have done with those refugees because you are signatory to the 19, 1951 uh, Refugee Convention, right? You're not... Well, th th what what your critics say basically, I'm airing those 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 concerns, is that you give them a different name so that you can just kick them out of your country. But they are essentially refugees. What the is UN your definition of refugees? The, 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 the UNHCR has been concerned about your by your actions of deporting those those people, because they say they call them draft dodgers in Eritrea. 
So they are going to be That's persecuted. There is political persecution and so on and so forth. That has been very well documented so by a number of international agencies. But the Do you suggest that we absorb in Israel all the soldiers that are drafted in the in Eritrean army? No, they go to different no. places. They, and one of them happens uh, to be so in you, Israel. You and you are, a democracy, you are a democracy, right? Yes, and we have a policy of open borders, but we have also a migration policy. And like every other country, we have the right according to the international uh, um, conventions, and I'm thankful that you mentioned that, so, and, uh, uh, and, and, and under the supervision of the Supreme Court that has... Uh, reversed the... No, that, uh, that has uh, reached an agreement, that uh, has uh, rejected the claims that, that this policy is, done, uh, uh, is, uh, is not done according to the, the international rules. So we, 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 ha we do a process like any other European, American, or democratic country that does, uh, as I say, those who are real asylum seeker, according to their, their stories and according to interviews and according to cross-checking the information that they provide, they, they will get the status that they are, they are entitled to have in Israel. Those who are just work migrants because they, have a, they want to have a better future than in Eritrea and Sudan, it's not up to us then. My question is how do you reach that conclusion once you define these people, you label these people infiltrators, then it ends, up, no. it ends there. Because we make the, like uh, there are procedures how to how to check the information you can you can check in Eritrea we have an embassy there you know, there are different ways how to how to know if someone telling you his uh, uh, the, his story is real or not oh, and and I will even surprise you that there are some Ethiopians among them who claim to be Eritrean because they know they will, uh, being Eritrean they have better chances to to get uh, <laughs> humanitarian status in because you know this is. Uh, this is a country uh, where uh, it has is, uh, established that uh, people have to cross in the border illegally, have to be shot in sight. And these are the people who are crossing the Sinai uh, and making it to Israel. Like, for example, we have how? How many? 30,000 perhaps Eritreans in, in, in Israel. And how many of them have been defined as uh, refugees and treated as such? How many of them? I don't Not even 100. Not even 100. So all the rest, close to 30,000 Eritreans, came to Israel just because they wanted to work, better life, and so on. None of them are politically persecuted. That's None right. of them, yes. that's what you've decided. Th no, that's what we have uh, concluded. That's what we have concluded. And the the fact that someone is drafted in the army and doesn't want to serve the army, and maybe the conditions are harsh, it's not up to us to make any judgment, but does not entitle him then uh, a status of... of uh, what do you make of the UNHCR's concerns? Because the UNHCR urged no, your country not to forcibly deport African refugees or asylum seekers. That's what it has decided. Um, and it has concrete evidence that they are actually refugees. So, uh, and is a refugee agency speaking. Yes, so therefore, uh, I fully agree. We do not deport, as I said from the beginning. We, we, give, uh, we relocate them in safe countries. Or those who refuse, we don't force them. Those who refuse, they, they are in detention centers. Is the Negev desert close to the Egyptian border? In the Negev, yes. Um, I don't know if it's near to the Egyptian border, but and yeah. And m many of them don't want to return, not only to Eritrea and South Sudan, but also to a third country. What do you do with them? Keep them in, in, re in, in detention centers? Yes. Yes. What to do? Yes. And? and what about the people who have been, who have been have a hunger, hunger, have hunger strike? I, I'm not aware of that, but it's that's certainly the, not the solution. So we, as I said, we tried to all uh, very hard to, to convince them through financial in, uh, incentives to to go to safe countries. What country are three thousand five hundred U.S. dollars and a one-way ticket? Is that a financial incentive? You think? I think it's it's pretty uh, yes, pretty incentive uh, for uh, for coming to 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 restart to restart a decent life. In a country, if if they want, but I think the basically all they want is to go to go to Europe or to the U.S. Uh, if given the chance to to, to leave Israel. Um, but you know, we cannot solve the, the the problems of all the world and of the poor in the in in, in the world. We think that the, we should help the countries of origin, and that's what we do in in having in having a better governance, to have um, um, inclusive uh, development, and the solution should be found in these countries. The solution that these countries are uh, we we uh, led them to to to. Their young, yeah, the young generation to leave the country is certainly not the solution. Yeah, but that's, uh, we're talking about people who are in your country. We are not Israeli citizens. And this is not what the Holocaust survivors said. They wrote a letter 
to your Prime Minister, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, saying that he has to stop this, what they were, they were very explicit in their, in their letter, deportation of Africans from Israel. This is not how Israel was founded. Israel was founded as a safe haven for, for Jews. Yes. This is not the Israeli way. That's what the Holocaust survivors say. Okay. And they have explicitly written a letter to your to Prime Minister to stop this deportation. Yes, yes. so it demonstrates that, first of all, as an open uh, democracy no. in Israel, there are very various views from uh, extreme with those who say we shall absorb all of them and from those who say... Uh, but these are Holocaust survivors. Yes. These are Holocaust okay. survivors. And there are other right. citizens in Israel who have different opinions and who think that there are too many challenges to... To, to receive these people economically and culturally. There are different views in Israel. It's not, you know, one, one, one view. And the Holocaust survivors, of course, they have all the respect to, to, to their views, but sometimes maybe they do wrong comparison because we're not talking about a, a Holocaust situation in none of these countries. Uh, Sudan is, is a safe uh, and, and stable country. Eritrea has harsh conditions maybe, but, but it's definitely not, uh, there are no uh, Holocaust situation. So the comparison yes. are, are too easy to do in order to, 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 to try to convince, but if you look to, to, to the fact, it, it's not the case. And as I said, in, in, in any case, we, we, the migration policy of Israel is not to be open to all the poor or uh, miserable people of the world. We, we're, we're not going to solve the, the problems in this way. But, well, uh, those uh, Holocaust survivors have a point, according to your critics, because... Uh, many of the Israeli politicians have said out in public that the refugees, which make quite, quite a population in South Tel Aviv, have turned it into a slum. So they have, uh, uh, they are changing the Israeli, the Jewish demographic. It smacks of racism. It has nothing to do with racism. Israel is, is the national state of the Jewish people, and we want to remain with a majority of Jews. It's totally legitimate, and it's it's the raison d'être of this country, and we have no uh, reason a priori to to to, inc to encourage migration from from ne other nations that have no nothing to do with our religion, with our culture, with our history, with uh, with the, the 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 reason why this uh, country is is established. That's the, the as I said, the raison d'être. That's the reason why we exist. It's the national state of the Jewish people, and it will stay that way. It will stay in that way, yes, of course. And does it tally with uh, the way Israel as a polity ev evolves as a democratic state? Well, being the national state uh, of the Jewish people does not mean that there are no minorities. We have 17% of uh, Arab minority in Israel. There are some of them mostly Muslims, but we have Christians. We have Ethiopian uh, Christians in Israel. You have really all the regions that you can imagine, you find them in Israel. So it's an open democratic country uh, where, where minorities enjoy all the, the rights and uh, there's a very high tolerance for... The deadline is approaching for these people to make a decision uh, Indeed. at the end of this month. Yeah. So does it mean that you are going to, to round them up uh, mm -hmm. and all these 30,000, 40,000 refugees in Tel Aviv or whatever and then throw them in the Negev Desert? That's what you're going to do? I'm not a prophet and uh, I'm not well, a... Well, well, the, I, the, I cannot... the deadline is approaching because you've gave yeah, 60 okay. days okay. to leave the country, take $3,000 uh, a one-way ticket out of, out of, uh, out of uh, Israel if they don't do that, you're going to round them up from Tel Aviv in broad daylight and send them to the Negev Desert. Is that why you're going to That's do? one of the options. Another yeah. option could be maybe to 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 extend the the deadline if if we see that it uh, it basically succeeds. Uh, there are different options, and it you know it's not uh, doesn't have to be necessarily in a drastic, uh, dramatic way that uh, the media will be able to show some <laughs> some uh, dra drama. Be, uh, so certainly, is not going to 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 portray uh, Israel in good light. It's not just a ma uh, matter of uh, image, you know. There are some uh, interest and some. Uh, duties that the government has to to implement and if it's not popular so it has to do it even if it's not popular well uh, ambassador morav thank you very much it was a pleasure having you on my show thank you very it much has indeed. been a great pleasure to me thank you